Are you trying to take your car to a million miles? Do you think your car will get to a million miles? Is it important to you to have your car on the road for long periods of time and to have that long-term reliability? Or are you one of these people that just buy a car, kill it, move on and buy another car. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are about clocking up massive mileages on your car and what you feel the realistic limit is for your engine. Let me know the engine as well. And we'll see how confident people are in their cars. But this video, we're just gonna look at a few very, very special million mile cars. We did a survey recently on this channel. We've had lots of votes, lots of feedback. I'm surprised actually at the extreme mileages that some people have managed to get their cars up to. When you start digging down, you see that there are some secrets, some things that these people do to make sure that these cars get to the million mile mark. So we'll break these down in this video and just discuss what it takes for you to have a million miles on your car. So what's the record? Well, it's actually a 1966 Volvo. It's a P1800. It's owned by Irv Gordon, who sadly passed away a little while ago. He bought the car to enjoy. He clocked up some massive long distance journeys in that car. He racked up a total of three and a quarter million miles. So from my knowledge and research, he's there at the top. He's standing there holding the record of the most miles clocked up on a car. So that was a Volvo from 1966. The next one I found was used as a Greek taxi. So despite the fact it was being used as a taxi and in Greece, it managed to clock up a rather astoundingly eye-watering 2.85 million miles. That was a 1976 model. So it's interesting. We've got so far fairly old cars clocking up this mileage. Is that a thing? Let's discuss that. And then I found a 1979 Volvo 245 GL and that had clocked up 1.63 million miles. So a lot of people will stand back and say those old cars were reliable, they can do this mileage, but modern cars will never get there. So there may be an element of truth to that, but let's just think about what it takes to clock up a million miles. At an average speed of 50 miles per hour, it would take 20 thousand hours to clock up a million miles. That's 833 days of non-stop driving. You're not going to be practically able to drive a car non-stop for 833 days. So let's break it down into a practical expectation. Let's say you use a car for four hours a day. It would take 5,000 days, 13 years to clock up a million miles. In many areas, though, the average speed of 50 is rather optimistic. You're looking at 40 miles an hour or even less than that. But let's take 40 miles an hour. Again, with four hours a day of driving, it would take 17 years to clock up a million miles. So, yes, older cars do clock up much higher mileages, but that's just because they've been around longer. There's more chance, more scope for them to clock up those higher miles. So can newer engines deliver when it comes to mileage? Well, manufacturing tolerances are much tighter. The emissions regulations have actually forced manufacturers to make the engines a lot more efficient. The modern formulations of engine oil are far superior to how they were all those years ago. So the potential there is that modern engines will clock up much more miles than maybe some of the older engines did. But there's also weaknesses. A lot of manufacturers have cut corners, cut costs, used inferior parts. So there's a lot of replacing of bits that go on engines. Now, we've got to talk really about Trigger's broom. So Trigger is a character. There's probably in every culture something like this that conveys the same story. But he had this broom for 20 odd years. It had had three heads and four handles. Can't remember the exact figures, but something like that. So it wasn't really the original broom. So with these million mile cars, we really want to discount anything that's not still on the original engine. We would expect maybe to have a bit of work done on the engine just to keep it reliable. There's a lot of wear and tear going on. So we'll allow an overhaul of the original parts. But clocking a million miles up on a car that's not actually the original car because it's been completely refurbished is in my book cheating a little bit. So we won't let them get away with that. But the examples I've found, they seem to be on original parts predominantly. The usual service items have obviously been replaced. Maybe a little bit of work has had to be done on the engine just to keep it working or keep it running. But it's pretty phenomenal that people can clock up those extreme mileages. And it really makes mockery of the fact that some people only expect their car to get to 100,000. It's almost like that is the, the Logan's run death knell when you get to the 100,000 mile mark. 
that's it, your car will just stop working. It's not like that. Your car potentially can go on. So what are the secrets to getting a car up to a million miles? Well, the key thing, everyone I've asked as to why they've got such a high mileage and such reliability from their car, they've serviced the car fastidiously. In pretty much every case, they've exceeded the manufacturer's recommended service intervals. They've used special high quality oils. There's all sorts of recommended products that people have been bandying about and are recommending to me. But the key takeaway really is that people look after their cars and their cars have now looked after them. They've clocked up these Starship mileages on their car. So we've done a video recently that looked at the reliability of a car and how often you should service it and looking at oil analysis and how that can give you insights into how frequently to change your oil. But that was really one of the, the takeaways. Everyone who had a car with a high mileage had done a lot of research and really established this baseline for servicing the car that was tighter than usual. The next thing was really how they used the car. So most of them would do long journeys. It might be their work or for recreation, they cover vast distances. So rather than clocking up a million very short miles, in most cases, they're doing long runs. They're avoiding that wear and tear you get from those short journeys. So the way the car is used. Now, you're gonna hate me for saying this, but if you are really gentle with the accelerator and you don't use the RPMs more than say about 2000, your engine will last forever practically. You're not putting any extra wear and tear on the engine. So obviously there's different engines out there. They're all designed it differently. Some have got much higher RPM ranges than other engines. You'll find that diesel engines in particular are much more reliable. It's the way they're constructed. They tend to be quite solid, over-engineered lumps of metal. They're working under extremely high pressures, so they have to be over-engineered. And as a result of that, they're much more reliable. The fuel that is used in a diesel engine is an oil. So the fuel itself is actually lubricating the fuel pump, the cylinders, the pistons. Every aspect of the engine that moves inside it is getting lubricated much more than you would find in a gasoline petrol powered car. So some engines lend themselves to reliability. Now, a lot of people think of Honda and Toyota as being particularly reliable brands. I think actually, if you ask 10 people what the most reliable brand of car was, they'd all probably name their own car. Let me know in the comments what you think about reliabilities of brands, whether some companies have got a reputation they don't deserve. Let me know in the comments. I'm always interested to know what you think of that. But a lot of these engines are really over-engineered and they work or they are used in much lower RPM ranges that most people would normally exploit. So in the case of Honda, you've got the high revving VTEC zone and a lot of drivers, a lot of those older drivers are nowhere near the VTEC zone. They're used to driving a car at say two to 3000 RPMs. So that's really what they do. And this engine has been over-engineered. It can cope with a lot more. So it's not even breaking a sweat in its day-to-day -day usage. So a lot of people are just not stressing their cars. Now, talk cars, it's not about really making your car last forever and grannying it everywhere. We want to enjoy our cars. We want to promote people going out and having fun in their car where it's legal to do so, obviously. But in the case of these million mile cars, they have been looked after, they've been grannied, they've been respected, they've avoided those common pitfalls that you get when you start abusing your car. So think about the way you drive the car. Maybe rather than just stick to the low RPMs and granny it everywhere, just avoid those really high RPM regions or don't exploit them as often as maybe you have been. And that will go some way to extending the lifespan of your engine. So I think the biggest thing really to getting a million mile car is the owner. The driving habits and how fastidious the owner is at maintaining the car. So it really does help to have a little bit of mechanical knowledge, mechanical sympathy. If you understand what's going on inside the engine, inside the car itself, you'll be able to tailor your driving style to just avoid excessive wear and tear and those common pitfalls that prematurely kill engines. I've got lots of other videos that go into the ways you can kill an engine prematurely, particularly turbocharged engines. There's a few things that people need to be aware of if they're not already familiar with the idiosyncrasies of the modern turbo engine. So thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments what your mileage is up to and what you expect it to get up to. If I've missed any points out of this video, please let me know. I love your feedback. I try and read every single comment, although time often 
means I don't get an opportunity to reply to every single comment. But your opinions, the cars you've got, the engines you've got, they do help to shape the future content. Boot that like button because that really does help us to get out there. And I've lined this video up for you that you should find really interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in this next video.